Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Welcome everybody. Today I'll be reading an article on lacking a single molecule. Now, in my travels on the dark web, the interwebs, I highlight, I bookmark, make a note of certain articles that have to do with science, well-being, things like that. And I'll just read the article, give a little bit of my thoughts on it, and that's what I'm going to do today for this podcast. The actual article is called, People with Depression are Lacking a Single Molecule, Scientists Discover. It's by Matt Davis. It's coming to the Big Think website. As always, or if I forget, remind me. In the description, I'll put a link to the article. So, I will begin with its highlight. Acetyl L carnitine has long been recognized as important for metabolism of fatty acids and mitochondria. Its newly discovered link to depression could one day change the lives of millions. And this article will have a play button so you can listen to the article and you don't have to hear me. I find that pretty cool. A new study published in PNSA, PNAS has uncovered a critical biomarker of depression and a promising treatment method based on the body's levels of a single molecule called acetyl L carnitine, ALC. This molecule's main job is to help transport fatty acids into mitochondria. In effect, it helps provide cells with energy. By comparing the blood levels of 71 depressed individuals and 45 healthy individuals, it was discovered that ALC levels were significantly lower in those suffering from depression. Not only that, but the more depressed the individual was, the lower the ALC levels. Links are in this article, there's plenty of them. Depression affects nearly 10% of the population at a given time. And one in four adults will experience a major depressive episode at some point in their lifetime. Although sadness is a major symptom of depression, it's not the only way that it manifests. Rather, depression is a persuasive, a pervasive and persistent experience of symptoms such as a loss of energy, difficulty thinking, a loss of interest in previously pleasurable activities, as well as a sense of sadness. Of the 71 depressed individuals in the study, 43 were diagnosed with severe depression. Interestingly, these severely depressed individuals had the lowest ALC levels and were more likely to have treatment-resistant depression, to have undergone childhood trauma or abuse, and to be women, likely depression occurs more often in women than men. According to the researchers, about 25-30% to of all depression sufferers have this type of severe depression. Because ALC levels correlate with the presence and severity of the patient's depression, measuring ALC in the blood can help psychiatrists determine who is at the greatest risk and help develop a treatment plan. In fact, providing ALC supplements to depressed patients might represent a critical treatment method. You know, looking, this is from 2018. I'd like to do a follow-up, maybe do a little deep dive into this. I'll continue. A powerfully, a potentially powerful treatment. Medication is available for depression, but doesn't work for everyone. And antidepressants can lose their efficacy over time. When they do work, they're often accompanied by symptoms that match the disease with discomfort, nausea, weight gain, a loss of sexual desire, anxiety, and other crummy states of being. But evidence exists that ALC supplementation could be a simple and effective way to treat depression. Carla Nasca, the lead author of the study, 
previously conducted studies on rodents with low ALC levels and depression. Of course, you can't ask a rat whether they've experienced a loss in their sense of purpose in life, but you can evaluate whether they have depressive-like symptoms, like sleep disruptions, anxious behavior, changes in weight, and changes in the density and function of the hippocampi, amygdala, and other neural structures affected by depression. In rodents experiencing depressive-like symptoms, supplementing them with ALC rapidly addressed their symptoms and ameliorated, ameliorated the dysfunction of key depression-related related brain structures. Whatever that means. What's more, ALC did all this within a matter of days, while most antidepressant, antidepressant medication can take weeks to kick in. According to Dr. Nasca's studies, ALC supplementation would work in depressed individuals by regulating the expression of genes related to synaptic plasticity. Essentially, these genes produce molecules that help the brain strengthen, weaken, generate new synapses. Depressed individuals aren't able to do this as well as others, causing critical mood-regulating regions in their brain to perform poorly. By regulating these genes, the neural dysfunction normally seen in depression improved. What's next? Unfortunately, it remains to be seen whether ALC supplementation will have the same drastic effects in humans as it did in rats. Subtle genetic differences can have vastly different effects across species, and it remains to be seen how exactly ALC will work in human beings. On this note, the researchers said, we've identified an important new biomarker of major depression disorder. We didn't test whether supplementing that substance could actually improve patient's symptoms. What's the appropriate dose, frequency, duration? We need to answer many questions before proceeding with recommendations. Yet, this is the first step toward developing that knowledge, which will require large-scale, carefully controlled clinical trials. The achievement of this study was in identifying that ALC levels are low in human beings, just as in rats. While this is a major milestone toward finding an effective treatment for depression, questions remain as to whether supplementation can help treat this disease, whether ALC levels are low, at-risk, but non-depressive patients. If it is a biomarker for depression, only for other affective disorders as well, and many more. I hope there's breakthroughs. I always feel bad that mental health is not taken as seriously or treated the same as other illnesses or injuries. Articles like this are important. I think we need to uh, follow up on as many studies as we can, fund them. We need to find effective treatments. There's too many people with depression. We all know somebody. I myself have suffered uh, severe depression for a time. It is only in the last three or four years that I feel normal, more comfortable. But there's a stigma out there. Mental health is not treated the same. But if anybody listens to my podcast and is depressed or even worried about things, needs a person to talk to, a friend, you can contact me on Twitter, uh, Facebook Messenger. You just if you want to talk. I have a, um, a twi- well, my Twitter handle would be Addiction Master. I do have a Discord server. Mostly everything's geared towards my channel. And I have a playlist if you look at my YouTube channel. And you'll see Foundation for Wellness. I talk about how important I think breathing and meditation techniques help and improve mental health. How they're valuable tools. I go on to describe 
the construct, which helps me deal with grieving and loss and that connection to people in my own way, in my own spirituality. I think it's important. Uh, I think for too long we've been more concerned about going and seeing how our bodies can perform and pushing them and, you know, doing your reps and sweating. And of course it makes you feel good. It helps with depression. I mean, exercise is is really important. I imagine we can couple that with the discipline and the work put in and put it towards mental wellness. What is reps for depression? What is reps for critical thinking? It's really thinking about thinking. It's taking time to analyze your thoughts, to clear everything and try to maintain a void. And when it breaks, when you get a random thought or something distracts you, and then you try again, those are your reps. So I think it's important. If we can identify things, if science can help us, I think it's a great breakthrough. I want to see more um, progress made. Things like this give me hope. I wish I could help more people going through what I went through. I think it's important. So stay healthy. Um, Like I said, reach out to me if you need to. I don't care if we've had arguments about politics or religion or whatever I in a way love all humanity I want to see everybody healthy and well so check out the article maybe do your own research if it piques your interest we can all do a little bit of thinking about thinking maybe even get a little informed on some things I enjoy these articles there's a little bit of hope every now and then (laughs) and you get to see where things are going when they're moving in what direction i've always found it interesting how to look at a lecture series or a um you know a science research college that sort of thing and they'll do seven days of lectures on certain breakthroughs and you can kind of gauge where in 2012 they said this is 15 years away, and then five years later, they say it's another 15. And they kind of explained why that gap, it didn't catch up. Sometimes it's the opposite. They might say it's 15 years, five years later, they say it's two years away. With superconductors and just a random things on neural breakthroughs and mapping our brains. We could find a single molecule missing, we can correlate it. Yes, it works and seems to improve rats. Let's put the funding, let's get the studies out there, let's see what we can find. Let's keep improving. I wish everybody the best, stay healthy, practice meditation, look into it, you can get a certain level and maybe even do some research on some breathing techniques. Stay healthy everybody and my best to you and yours.